In this video, we're going to learn about ClickStack. ClickStack is based on the idea that all observability data, be it logs, traces, or metrics, be stored in a single database where the signals can be easily correlated. The first component of the ClickStack is ClickStack's distribution of the OTAL collector, which provides an endpoint through which logs, traces, and metrics can be ingested. OTAL has become the de facto standard for observability data, so its a collector is the obvious choice for this component. OTEL is a specification for a data schema and transformation. There are default implementations of language SDKs for instrumenting and collecting data. It also, as mentioned before, provides a collector component, a single binary which can collect logs, metrics, and traces, but can also act as a centralized means of transformation or as a gateway prior to ingestion into your target data store. ClickStack has a custom distribution of this collector acting in the gateway role. We then have agents to collect logs and metrics from infrastructure. These could be third-party agents or other OTEL collectors. And we collect logs, metrics, and traces from our applications as well, this time via ClickStack SDKs, which provide additional instrumentation over the standard OTEL SDKs and are easier to integrate. However, you could use one of the OTEL SDKs and the data from the agents and SDKs is sent over the OTLP protocol to our ClickStack OTEL collector. The data is then ingested into ClickHouse with individual tables for each type of data. While we recommend using the OpenTelemetry collector for the best experience, this component is actually optional. You can think of ClickStack as being OpenTelemetry native, but not OpenTelemetry exclusive. You could also send wide events directly to ClickHouse from S3, Kafka, ClickPipes, or even other agents. So why ClickHouse? Observability data needs support for super fast aggregations over high cardinality data with cost efficiency at scale. ClickHouse is a natural fit because it excels at high cardinality data, compresses data efficiently, uses familiar SQL, and delivers those super fast aggregations. Its recent support for JSON means that it's also now able to handle the semi structured data often seen in observability. And finally, we have HyperDX as our UI to make sense of the data that we've stored. HyperDX lets us use a Lucene-like query language over our data, correlates logs, metrics, and traces together, and also lets us do session replay. Let's have a look at how to use the stack. If you want to get a feel for it quickly, the all-in-one Docker image is the way to go. This image has all three components. Remember, the HyperDX UI, ClickHouse, and our open telemetry collector. We can open our browser to localhost 8080 to see the HyperDX UI. We need to create a user the first time we do this. Next, let's have a look at how to ingest some data. So we'll open my OTEL collector file. You can see at the top, we're collecting data from various system log files. The second file log entry is specifically for the Mac as it doesn't log that much into log files, but it does have a log command that we can call and redirect its output to this file. We'll see how to do that in a bit. If we scroll down a little bit more, you can see we're collecting various types of metrics. And if we go all the way to the bottom, we can see our OTEL exporter config. The authorization token comes from HyperDX. We can find it by clicking on team settings and then browsing down to API keys and then it's ingestion API key. And then finally, we wire everything up at the end of the file. Next, we can run this Docker command to start the OTEL collector. And then next, we're going to do a little loop 10 times, calling the log stream command on the Mac. We're going to get it to give us the one line of JSON per output. We're going to give it a 10 second output. So it's going to run for 10 times 10, so 100 seconds, and it's going to be streaming the data into that file. If we return to HyperDX, we can see that events are now being ingested. Let's add file name to the list of files being shown. And we can then click on any of the rows to see that event in more detail. We've got the body at the top. And then if we scroll down, we can see all the various attributes. They're a bit easier to view if you click on the column values tab. We can also drill down on traces. And so you can see the information's in there. And then finally, on the last tab, we can see all the surrounding events. Next, we're going to add a filter so we can only see events from our Mac logs file. I'm then going to search for events related to my webcam. So you can see the top event there is the webcam being disconnected. Let's put live tail back on and I'm going to disconnect the webcam. And then a few seconds later, I'll plug it back in again. So you can see we've got two new events. If we click on the first one, that's the removed event. 
and then the one just above is the add event. So that's all worked well. We can also view these results in events pattern mode, which actually isn't that interesting for this search term. But if we remove the USB from the search term, we can see some better grouping. That's a quick crash course of viewing logs. We can also view metrics via the chart explorer icon. So if we click that on the left hand side and then we can change the source to metrics and we'll do the average of CPU utilization. So you can see it's pretty flat at the moment, but if we group by state, it's more interesting. So you can see my CPU is idle a lot, but user utilization is probably what we want instead. We can then adjust the time period if we want as well as the format of the value. So we'll be doing other videos on ClickStack, but in the meantime, check out this playlist for more ClickHouse videos.